in our gravity well. Yeah, and then so it would continue to slow down so we wouldn't see it for another you know, couple years, but it, it would make sense to me that perhaps it would be slowing down in its orbit. Potentially, maybe, but... Potentially. Yeah, it's not... It, it, things in space, know. you know... It's, it's, Stay in motion, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to slow Unless down. Unless they run into a lot of objects that bump them around, and actually bumping them around is mm. part of what Dr. Steele was saying, potentially it could be, is if it was a chunk of a rocket that we sent up, mm -hmm. it could be that it was something that went into orbit that we launched into orbit around the Earth or the Moon or ourselves, and then it got thrown off by the gravity well or actually ran into the Moon mm -hmm. and was kicked off into space and then just went bouncing around mm -hmm. and got locked into orbit because of that. So it should have been around us, but we accident you know, the Moon accidentally bumped, bumped into it. It had a fender bender or Or, I mean, you know, or even... <sighs> This was, you know, like a conglomerate of rocks and like whatever, and it encountered because it came close enough that maybe, like, if something knocked something out, a piece of metal or whatever, and it got incorporated into this thing, right? As it was like a everything was in perfect harmony, it got knocked into this thing. That's why we hadn't seen it really before. It wasn't being reflective because it didn't have our space junk in it yet. It, it may not have been spinning at that time. It may yeah. have run into some junk that it made it tumble some in junk. space. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. It's again, that's know. you know, it's if like... it's man-made, the numbers don't seem to fit. Well, at least I don't know. I don't earthly man-made, right? Right. Yeah. If it's earthly man-made. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to our next theory. Mm -hmm. And the third theory, I didn't, I didn't ever come across in my research. Per per se, it just never really sprang up for some reason, but I did have a brief email conversation with Dr. Steele. Oh. Because I wanted to I wanted to get his take on it and, and try to get an opportunity to chat with him, and he wasn't interested in it because he is, since he put out his paper in 95, mm -hmm. he's changed his, his, uh, his thoughts on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's now uh, of the group that believes that 1991 VG is a part of Apollo 12's Saturn V rocket, oh. specifically mm -hmm. the third stage of the rocket, which is an S-4B rocket. Yeah. So he said, well, now, it's it's pretty conclusive to me that it's the S-4B, and that's it. Yeah. Which makes sense, because these rockets are pretty stinking big. And let me give you the background of what happened with Apollo 12. They went up... When they launched Apollo 12, the ship, I think it was hit twice by lightning on launch, which messed up a lot of their systems, mm -hmm. and they had some serious problems. They didn't know if they were going to be able to continue the mission or if they were even going to be able to make it home. They get into space, controls are all messed up. The, eventually, ground control and the, the astronauts themselves, they figured out how to make things work, and they were able to get the stages to go, to release, and to send the lunar lander away, which eventually did land on the moon, and there's all the photos in the world on the internet to see that. Mm -hmm. What happened, though, is that what NASA intended to do is in a previous launch, they had taken the third stage of one of the rockets and they had crashed it into the moon. <laughs> and this time they wanted to go ahead and not crash it into the moon but send it specifically into orbit around the moon. Mm -hmm. When they went to do that, there was some miscalculation and... Yes. Had a little slingshot effect, did they? Yeah, they, well, they, so they, I, they, I, they pushed it too fast. Yeah. Apollo 12... As far as I know, it was a it was a pretty it was not a there was not no problem with that mission. So I, it sounds like you're confusing that with Apollo 13. No 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 Apollo 12 they had a lot of problems at launch. Once they were up and they figured it out, they were able to get everything running. 13 is where they had some major issues, mm -hmm. but 12 had some weird stuff in the beginning. And this was all during the launch sequence. Once they lifted off, systems went wonky. Mm. Why? So, sorry. Did, why did they want to put the thing in orbit of I don't know. the moon? I don't know why they wanted to do that. I think it was to see if they could do it. 
yeah. I'm guessing. I think, yeah, I, I, I really think that they were just dinking around. I mean, either thing either goes goes and crashes on the moon or that goes just off into space or whatever. Yeah, and they, and they, they for some let's reason see said, if we well, can control let, this thing. Yeah, let's you know. see if we can launch it, you know, and put it in orbit around the moon. Unfortunately, it burned too long mm. when they were venting the gases and it shuttled oh, oh, out of the moon's gravitational field okay. and disappeared. Sure. Uh, according to the research that I've seen, it was in a semi-stable orbit around the Earth and the moon for a couple of years until it escaped our orbit in 71. Okay. So here's the easy way to think about it. It gets kicked up, it circles us for a while, but its orbit's a little off, and then eventually it escapes the gravitational pull and then just goes and does its own thing in space. But how mm. big are those things? Are they really that big? 58 feet long. They're fairly large. But yeah, it's they're, like, they're uh, big. They're big. They're a rocket. I mean, the think about the rockets you see, uh, you know, in all the, the photos of Cape Canaveral when they're launching. That's a big chunk yeah. of rocket. Yeah, it's just, it's just the third stage, so it's the smallest part of it, but it's actually, but it's also the only part of the rocket that achieves escape velocity. Mm -hmm. so, so it's the only part, it's the only part of the rocket that's going to go in orbit around the sun versus in orbit around the moon. So, so the scientists Earth. think that it's, it's big enough <clears throat> to actually be this monolithic. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's, if it's 10 meters across, it's about 30 feet. Aren't the, aren't those things painted? Yeah, they're painted white and black, which, uh, there's another interesting fact to it. If they're white and black, that explains the blinking. Yeah, yeah, that would, the reflectivity of it. Plus, if it's a cylinder, it's not going to have a perfect rotation against us, so it's are going they paint, to twist. Are they, they're painted in lines, black and white, so it would... Or is it a checker? The, uh, well, actually, the, the, well, the stage, actually, I'm looking at a picture of it right now. The stage is actually painted pretty much all white, and then the bottom, there's a cone at the bottom that flares out that mates up with the wider second stage, mm -hmm. and that is painted white with a couple of black stripes. So you can see that cone right there. That's black and white. And then the top of it has got a white stripe around it also. So. I guess, yeah, so I guess I could see how like the optical illusion in space, if it were like straight, yeah, mm -hmm. vertical yeah. lines that, you know, the black and the white in contrast with each other, you know, that's in painting. That's how you make a corner. Look, yeah. Like it's a thing, right? So I guess I could see that. But looking at that picture, I don't know that it makes a lot of sense for half of it to be reflected and half of it to not be right. I but, mean. Yeah, but it's also um, it's also conceivable that the, the mating cone that basically fared it in with the, the rocket, the stage below it, which is wider, mm -hmm. that, that, thing, that thing would be about 30 feet in diameter at its widest point. Uh -huh. And that was painted black and white. Yeah. So if that, if that came if that came apart, came with the size it? of our object. It, it would yeah. be. You know, but here's my problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, I I don't like to do this when I give theories, immediately turn around and poke holes into it. Yes, but you do. Don't lie. I do. Yeah. But, well, today's show is a prime candidate of Steve doing that, because here's my problem with the theory that 1991 VG is the four, uh, the SB4 stage of the Saturn V rocket. Mm -hmm. In 2002, amateur astronomer Bill Young spotted something in space that was moving, and that object is identified as J002E3. That object, they did a electromagnetic spectrum analysis of it, which, again, that's a science that's beyond me. But what they figured out is that it c was consistent, that analysis showed it was consistent with white titanium dioxide, which was the paint that was used on the Saturn V rockets. So that's object number two that we're saying is the third stage of the rocket from Apollo 12. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's a bunch of garbage, like we said before, floating around the Earth and around our solar system. And though not all of them wink, there's some things that do. And lo and behold, there's another one. December 29, or September 29 of 2000. This is two astronomers at the University of Hawaii. They find a near-Earth object. And they catalog it as 2000 SG344. Uh, this particular object was within 4,800,000 miles of Earth, or about 20 
times farther out from Earth than 1991 VG was. Okay. Yeah. But when it got close, the object appeared to be about 100 to 200 feet in diameter, depending on its consistency, because that, you know, the brightness is hard yeah. to measure. But when they took a look at it, they noticed that it wasn't acting like an asteroid. So again, it was winking. Mm-hmm. They went ahead and they they went they decided. Well, has this thing been up there? Have we seen it for a while now? And the scientists did find photos from May of 1999 in their archives in a, around the same area, essentially. And they discovered it, and they went ahead and plotted its trajectory and figured out that it would have come around us approximately in 1971. Mm-hmm. And they were say they say that this particular piece of space junk is also the third stage of the Apollo 12 rocket. Mm-hmm. So why is Apollo 12 the you know the whipping boy of all these people is because we don't know what happened to it. Yeah, yeah. It, it slingshotted out into space and then we lost it, and they don't know where it's at. And so everybody is saying that this, that, and the other is that piece of rocket. Mm-hmm. It might be that it broke up into a couple of pieces, so it might actually be in a couple of different places too. But it, but its size, everything that they say is going to be this chunk of Saturn V rocket. Is about the same size. Mm-hmm. So unless it bred in space, it's, you know, it found a nice little, little little rocket kittens. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, I don't think it's it. Yeah. I guess yeah. The Hawaii one makes the most sense to me, right? That it, you know, they estimated it probably would have been there around seventy one, which is around when you know we lost the thing. And that's about Apollo twelve time. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Yeah. So I, 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 I'm I'm hesitant to say that it's Apollo 12. Me too. Which leads me to our last, our aliens. fourth. Is it aliens? It is. <gasps> oh, right on. We're finally doing aliens? We're finally yeah. doing oh aliens. Oh, my goodness. Wow, we never done aliens before? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. In, huh? Really? When? Well, not in space, but on this earth. We've always, we've run oh. the aliens. We've done aliens a few times, yeah. Right, yeah. All right. So here's uh, here's the final theory about what 1991 BG is. There's a bunch of people who say that it is something from an alien civilization. Mm-hmm. Specifically, they are saying that it's a Bracewell probe. Oh. Have you ever heard of a Bracewell probe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For anybody who doesn't know what a Bracewell probe is, essentially the theory goes, and this was first theorized by a gentleman by the name of Ronald Bracewell in 1960, Mm -hmm. and he said that because travel between pieces in the galaxy or places in the galaxy are so long and it's hard to send transmissions like radio waves, you could send a probe, Mm -hmm. and that probe would be autonomous. It would be essentially self-sustaining, and it would look for what it considered an intelligent species or a planet that could possibly have intelligence on it at some point. Mm -hmm. Once it found that intelligence, it would communicate with that species in some way and then alert it's original, the species that sent it out, and then we could all get together and have a galactic chat over it's tea. Like, it's and they like could a, exterminate us and take yeah, our planet. It's, yeah. it's essentially a more sophisticated voyager, right? Uh, I mean, yes. you know, we've done what we could at that point. The exactly. voyager that has all of our information on it. It doesn't bribe broadcasts, right? Does it broadcast something? Voyager? Yeah. It broadcasts back to us, so it must be. Yeah, yeah. it does send signals back. To something, us. you know, I so, okay, but it doesn't. You know, search. It's not an mm-hmm. intelligence of any kind. Right. Yeah. It's just it's just a floating probe. We're hoping yeah. for somebody else to find it, whereas yeah. this would be looking for uh-huh. somebody. Yeah. And actually, I know you, Devin, will love this. Mm. The Bracewell probe yeah. was the basis for the original story that 2001 A Space Odyssey yeah. was based upon. Duh. So that's, if you've ever seen that movie, that obelisk was a Bracewell probe. Dun, dun. Uh. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's, why they, that's why they buried it on the moon, you know, because when man is, when man is sophisticated enough to actually go to the moon and actually find, find this it. thing yeah. and dig it up, and then the sun hits it, and that's when it sends off its little message. To right. It to, yeah. But people say, it's well, like, it's a bracewell object, and so it's it's right. circling our planet. It's, it's just but, be, recently found us, and it's waiting for us to come back around and be smart enough to communicate with it so that it can introduce us to everybody else. Oh, that's I in was going to say it's waiting for us to be smart enough to go fish it out of there, yeah. right? We like, need to let's go just grab go it. send a fishing line out there and pull it back in. What's the problem? <laughs> Maybe that's the way it works. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, bracewell objects are in sci fi stuff all over the mm-hmm. place. Every intelligent probe is a bracewell, but nobody knows that that actually is going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bracewell himself just kind of made it up. It's theory. Well, well because, I, you know, uh, artificial intelligence elsewhere in the universe that coexists at the same time as we are also intelligent yeah. is a statistic, statistic improbability. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, well, you know, you're talking a lot of distance, and not just that, but a lot of a lot of objects to examine. Mm-hmm. A lot of solar systems, you know, to send your, your probes to. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. although that's it's not as many as we think. As it turns out, they, they just did a study... They call them the Goldilocks planets, mm-hmm. right? Not too hot, not too cold, perfect mm-hmm. for life that we recognize by our, you know, laws of physics and whatever would be able to harbor intelligent life, right? Earth-like planets okay. that have what we understand to be the basic building blocks of. I understand there are theories out there about there being other yeah, types yeah. of aliens, but in our galaxy, there are only 104 planets. 104 so far. No, like at all. That we can identify. And in the Goldilocks zone, correct me if I'm wrong, is planets that are approximately the same distance away from a sun like ours or are getting the same amount of radiation to uh-huh. equate that distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that it's a really narrow band. It's yeah, a ribbon. Oh, it is. It's a very narrow ribbon around a sun that yeah. can hold a planet that we know of yeah. that can harm yeah. life. Right. So, well, I, you so know, so what I'm curious about is that they they found they've identified. I, I think th- just to clarify, it sounds like they've identified 104 so far, but uh, they haven't. Uh, that's not a comprehensive study, correct? Well, I mean, it's, I mean they it's haven't based examined on, the entire galaxy. Th- right? I, it's not based on examination; it's based on calculations. But so that's. A, I mean, that's a pretty astoundingly it's, low number. It is, but it's a statistical achieved number, and you know how statistics are. It's hard to say because sure. you've got a small pool that you can observe. It would be like saying there are only X number of one bedroom apartments in a 30 block radius in my town and that means there's only X number total in the city. Right, but so I guess my argument on that is that if we were to send out a probe, we would start with those 104 True. Sure. Goldilocks yeah. planets sure, for as sure. would any That'd alien be the criteria race. that the, it would be looking for. Right, so they would send that to something that looks like Earth, ostensibly, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We're just we're making some vast yeah. assumptions here. Very yeah. vast. Some pretty big assumptions here. But if there were an alien race in our galaxy, which you kind of assume they're probably in our galaxy, right? To, for it to make it mm-hmm. here. But yeah. maybe not. Maybe it's from some completely different galaxy. But let's just say they're in our galaxy. They send it to the similar Goldilocks things. There's only 104. Okay. Yeah. They found it. It's, it's not that long to find life, intelligent yeah. life. Well, I mean, it's, it's a long distance to travel. and right, the, but, That's why you send a probe, right? Not yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why you send a probe so right. you don't go, oh, look. That would be <laughs> like, yeah. Nothing here. I know. This Whoops. sucks. Yeah. Uh, think, but uh, the time we got here, you know, it fell apart. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, but they it is. They each other by the time we got here. I, I got to say that uh, if they have an interstellar probe that's only about 10 meters long, then we have to snag that thing and take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, cause, I mean that's, you know, for, with, with known technologies, these are not technologies that we're exploring now or that we actually have. You mm-hmm. know, we, we've talked about them. They theorize Yeah, we have a lot of things possible. around uh, grabbing stuff out of space. Yeah. We've just never done yeah. it. Yeah, I'm just talking about an interstellar drive. Uh, there's, like, the things like ramjets, the ramjets that just use random, random hydrogen that exists between the stars. And but they they tend to be very large structures. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd be really interested in something that's that's only ten meters long, that's capable of interstellar travel. Yeah, that's some technology we need to get our hands Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Seriously. No kidding. Yeah. No, it really no is. kidding. So yeah, I 
I hate to say it, but I think alien. You really like this theory. And, I and like the alien theory. I think it's the best theory. And honestly, yeah. I'm out of theories. That's the hard part. Is this is these are all these are the main things that I could come across. You know, as generalizations, yeah. uh, and I. I I don't know. To Just, be honest, I mean, I'm waiting. Honestly, look at, like, of those theories that you have, what is the most plausible? Like, if you just, like, okay, in your mind, accept that aliens exist. It, mm. I, I think that, uh, from what I can tell in the research, I believe that it's a metallic object that is an engineered object. Okay. The meaning that it's not random space rock. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, is that engineered objects of junk that we put up that somehow stuck itself together and now has an orbit? Or we did or somebody else did? I don't know. Here's the thing we're overlooking is Russia. <laughs> Russia? Dude, that country's big enough. They could have launched some stuff into orbit without us ever knowing. Very true. Nah, we, we would know about it. I mean, we've got, we, we, we watch their rocket launches pretty carefully. We've been doing it for a long time because of that. There's that whole thing about ICBMs and all that stuff. So That's what that, that's what those asteroids, they keep getting hit with asteroids. They're not asteroids. <laughs> They're accidental returning <laughs> spaceships. Yeah. 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 The, yeah interstellar boomerangs. They're using it to cover. Yeah. Yeah, could be. Like, oh, something hit here. We don't know what it was. Oh, there's uh, no debris. Weird. Uh, yeah. We definitely yeah. didn't launch something instead of it hitting. Yeah. Well, I, again, I, I personally don't know what it is. To go to our website, because we have the links about this particular story, and there is a fantastic link that we're going to put up that will actually allow you to watch 1991 VG in its uh, orbit around the sun. No, let's with be very Earth. clear. It's just like a little like computer simulation. Well, it's a very, but it's it's but it, it's it, really it, informative. It's very informative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I understood it so much <laughs> better once I watched that. So I know we're going to include that and in some of the other bits uh, that we that I've found here. So. That'll be good. Uh, that website, as always, is going to be thinkingsidewayspodcast.com. You can listen to the show right there on the website. You can go ahead and listen to us on Stitcher. If you're on the go, you don't have time to download it. You can just listen to it right on your mobile phone, your smartphone. Or if you want, you can always go ahead and go to iTunes and download the show right there. And leave if, us a rating. And yeah, if you're on iTunes and you're liking what you're hearing, go ahead and leave us a comment or a rating. Heck, if you want, you can even go ahead and send us an email to tell us, A, what you thought of the show, or B, what your thoughts for this particular story are. Or C, if you have stories you want to hear. Or if oh, you have stories you want to hear, that would be awesome. I We've gotten some good ones. We've gotten some really good By ones. By the way, i got to share some stuff. We've got some good stuff recently, yeah. and i got to share that with you. I've been keeping really? it in my coat pocket. Yeah. I haven't been sharing with you, and I'm going to do that. You're holding out on us. Where's my gun? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> holding out on you. Uh, that email address that you can go ahead and get a hold of us at is going to be thinking sideways podcast at gmail.com. Wow. That's a big email address. It is a big yeah. email address. And last, but most certainly not least, go ahead and find us and friend us on Facebook. We're there. We put up bits of information that we come across Sometimes. and uh, upcoming stories. So go ahead and uh, and find us on there, and I know you'll enjoy it. Mm. And with that having been said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and call it a night. So... Talk to you soon. Mm, night, everybody. We're orbiting out of here. Number one, out. make it so. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking Sideways is not brought to you by Code Writing Carpenter Ants. Instead, it's supported by the generous contributions of people like you, our listeners, on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash thinking sideways to learn more. Thinking sideways. I don't understand. Does not compute. You never know. Insufficient data supporting data supply. What? Stories of things we simply don't know the answer to. Well, hey there, and welcome again to another episode of Thinking Sideways. I am Steve, of course, joined by... Devin. And Joe. And Joe. Okay. And this week we have yet another mystery. Uh, this week we are going to talk about the death of... Abis Strong bad. <laughs> of Abismo <laughs> Negro. Oh. Abismo Negro, for anybody who doesn't know, was a, uh, was a luchador. 
Uh, and his uh, luchadors, that's obviously Abismo Negro, was his uh, ring name. His real name was actually Andreas Alejandro Palameque Gonzalez. Do we want to tell people what a luchador is? We will. That's probably we will. a good idea. We're, we're, oh, okay. Sorry. We're going to get there. I'm sorry. Just a brief description of what the mystery is before we talk about the details on it. Palameque was found dead under a bridge near, near El Rosario, Mexico in March of 2009. Uh, and the initial belief of what caused his death and then the eventual official cause of death was accidental drowning, which caused a lot of questions to be raised. And the reason, partially, is because it's the, it was during the dry season in Mexico. And he drowned in a mud puddle. And he drowned. Yeah. Basically, basically yeah. yeah. Yeah, he basically drowned in a mud puddle. But so. it was filled with deadly dihydrogen monoxide. <laughs> that stuff will get you. Oh, yeah. A single teaspoon of that can kill you. Can kill you. Yeah. And everybody who's consumed it dies. Mm-hmm. You yeah. done? Nope. Okay. okay. Uh, so this, this supposed mud puddle was actually a... It was a body of water. It was about a waist, about waist deep. But it is really strange because it raises the question of how does a man who is so physically fit drown in such a small body of water? When he could just stand up. Could he could just <laughs> wait yeah. for stand up. Yeah. Uh, and so the mystery, the questions around the mystery are, you know, how did he die? Was it really an accident? If so, how did it happen? And if it wasn't an accident, then it must have been murdered. And who pu- pulled off this very well covered up murder? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really what our story is. Good it's, questions, all. It's quite insidious, I must agree. Before we get into the mystery, quick shout out to Steven, who suggested this. Not like, Steve. Not, not me. Yeah. No, somebody else. Like a year ago, which I've been, this is another one I've been sitting on forever. I, yeah. I admit it, I'm doing this all the time. I, you are. You know, I go through that spreadsheet that we keep of all of the suggestions, and I see, oh, that one sounds, oh, Steve called dibs already. That one's, yeah. oh, Steve called dibs already. Okay, I'll do this one. No, Joe's got dibs already. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you guys have been doing this for years. I know, I really apologize. I really, we should have warned you, except that you would have got in on the really good stories, is to tell you that we were calling dibs yeah, on the spreadsheet. Yeah, I know, so. I didn't know. I hey, you. by the way, Devin, we're calling dibs on the spreadsheet, so go ahead and, and call dibs on anything you want. Oh, great, now. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've, you know, actually, the reason I do that is that every time it's time to do an episode, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good mystery to do, I, I go out there and I go through those things, and sometimes I'll be opening those up and realizing, Christ, you know, I've looked at this thing like three times already, and I'm forgotten about it. Yeah, I'm not going to look. So I, started, I, spent, I decided to start marking the good ones. Uh-huh. And you'll notice I've marked other ones as too short or not a mystery. Or I have just... noticed that. Joe has his own crib note system. He does. Yeah, yeah. I still don't know what the asterisk means. I've asked him three times. He refuses to tell me. Actually, I've forgotten what it means. <laughs> I think it means I looked at it or something. So, yeah. new mystery next yeah. week. What does the asterisk mean? Dips. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go on with our story. Okay. Shall we? Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. I do have... Okay. Before we actually get into the story, quick, uh, quick disclaimer here. Story took place in Mexico. There's a lot of Spanish. Spanish is not a language that I'm very good with. I mean, if you've heard me speak... British English, you know how bad I am. Or English, English. English, English? Yep, I said it. America. So, I have done a lot of work to get the pronunciations of things right. If I drop something, which chances are good, I'm going to drop a couple of things wrong. Ah. I apologize in advance. That's all right. Okay, back to Devin's question uh, several minutes ago, which is, what's a luchador? What is a luchador? Okie doke. Luchadors are wrestlers. Oh, Huh. Luchadors are part of a sport which is called Lucha Libre, which loosely translates to English as free fight. Lucha Libre is kind of similar to professional wrestling that you'll see in the U.S., which is it's non-Greco-Roman wrestling. Yeah, it's like the professional wrestling where the guys are big hulking guys and they have these all have these grievances against one another. Yeah, we're There's talking like passages, WWE sort of John Cena sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Except yeah. that the uh, the lucha libre is a little unique in terms of there's a cultural aspect where all of the wrestlers are always seen in the ring as their persona or outside the ring as their persona where they're wearing a mask if not an outfit and we're talking like hood mask yeah not full this. face mask you know complete body suits that are color matched so 
there are things that you'll see with these where it is very stylistically linked together. The masks are very stylistic, and one wrestler's mask and another wrestler's mask don't look anything alike other than they're a mask because just the way it's organized. It's, it's, it's very distinct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, frankly, I've always been a little creeped out by those masks. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree with that, actually. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's funny, though, is, is that most people probably will know what we're talking about because there's so much pop culture stuff that's been done. I mean, there's cartoons. There was uh, Mucha Lucha, which was on TV for several years, which was a cartoon. Um, or Strong Bad. Strong Bad from Strong Homestar Bad. Runner. Yeah. yeah. Although, my favorite thing about Strong Bad, did, yeah. did, have you ever caught the joke of Strong Bad? No. He's wearing a luchador mask, but he also wears boxing gloves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So there's this weird, this weird little joke in, in who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nacho Libre also. I don't think he wore the mask. I didn't see the movie. I didn't watch that. I, yeah, no, that's one of those ones I wasn't going to watch. Dr. Jack the Black idea. made that movie where poop disappeared. I kind of stopped watching this movie. I literally have no idea what you're talking about. I exactly. Think, I don't think I saw that one either. You're lucky. Yeah. What movie was that? Ben Stiller was in it.